Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about multi-threading and asynchronous programming. So basically, most of the times, people often confuse between these two terms. But actually, these two terms, multi-threading and asynchronous programming, are different from each other, and each have their own objective. So in this video, we are going to talk about what is multi-threading and what is asynchronous programming, and how these both are, are different from each other. And we are going to discuss about that using some real-world examples. So consider a real-world example of a chef uh, handling orders in a restaurant. So let's say uh, there is a chef uh, who is working for a restaurant. Now the chef has to handle uh, the orders that are given to the chef, right? So consider there are two orders submitted at the same time. Uh, so one customer wants coffee, and another customer wants some uh, boiled eggs. Now, the chef has to start preparing these orders. Maybe uh, let's consider the chef starts with the coffee. So the first thing the chef do is have to boil the milk. So the chef go ahead and start boiling the milk. Now the thing is, when the milk is getting boiled, the chef will not wait for that process to complete. Instead, the chef will go ahead and start another activity. Maybe he will start preparing the boiled egg. So he can go ahead and start boiling the eggs. And also when the chef started boiling the milk or started boiling the egg, he also put a timer here so that he will get an alert when this job is actually done. Also now the chef will not wait for the egg to be uh, complete the boiling. So he might also can start go ahead and start some other activity. Like he can go ahead and wash the dishes or clean the kitchen. So something like that. He can do some other activity in parallel when the milk, milk and the boiled egg is getting ready. Now when the milk is done with the boiling, it will get send an alert to the chef saying that the milk is ready. So now the chef will go back, add some sugar and caffeine to it, and then prepare the coffee and deliver the coffee to the customer. So similarly, when the boiled egg is also ready, again it will send another alert to the chef, and the chef will go ahead and prepare the boiled egg and deliver it to the customer. Now from this example, the one thing that we need to closely observe is, that the chef was not being idle at any point of time. So he never waits for one task to be complete before he picks the next task. So he was never being idle. This is a good example for asynchronous programming. Now let's say, uh, now let's see the same example for the multi-threaded programming, right? Uh, so in, the, in case of multi-threaded programming, the series of activities will be a little bit different. So when the chef receives these two orders to make a coffee, and to make a boiled egg, the chef is go ahead and hire two additional chefs, chef one and chef two. The chef will go ahead and hire two additional chefs to handle the orders. Now the chef one will go ahead and make the coffee and deliver it to the customer. And the chef two will go ahead and make the boiled egg and deliver it to the customer. Now the responsibility of the primary chef is to provide enough resources, the required resources to chef one and chef two, so that they can accomplish the task successfully. Once the job is done, the primary chef will go ahead and fire both the chefs, because they don't need anymore. You don't have to pay those chefs anymore because the job is done. And now whenever new order comes in, you can go ahead and hire new chef and delegate the task to the chefs. But there is one problem, right? You can't just go ahead and hire more number of chefs whenever there is a more number of orders coming in. That's not a very good idea to scale your restaurant. So that's where uh, the recommendation is to hire some certain number of chefs and keep it in your restaurant and then use them to manage all the orders. Sufficiently use all those chefs to manage your orders. And this is a good example for multi-threaded programming. Now let's try to understand the same concepts using some actual programming examples. Now let's say you have an application server. You have an application server that actually have to handle the request from the client. So consider your application server has to handle more number of requests from the client at the same point of time. The client will send more number of requests to the server. And the server is nothing but it could be a simple uh, web API, uh, so which will just receive the request, process the request, and it might be talking to a database 
to fetch some results from the database and then give the results back to the client. Now let's consider uh, both asynchronous programming and multi-threaded programming in this case. Now with the case of asynchronous programming, when the client sends a request to the server, so first the server will start processing the request. So maybe let's take the request 1. The server will start processing the request 1 and then it will send a query to the database. Now when it sends the query to the database to fetch some results, this might take some time because the database uh, might be handling some other request or also based on the capacity of the database, querying the DB4 results might take some time. The thing is, when the query for the database is happening, the application server doesn't have to wait here. It actually go ahead and start processing the request too. And for the request too, again it has to query the database to fetch some results. So it can go ahead and query the database for the request too. And again, similarly, like the request one, you again don't have to wait for the database to return you the results because it might take some time. So now you go ahead and start processing the request number three. Now at this point of time, maybe the query that we sent to the database for the request number one might have completed. So you might get a call back from the request number one. So now you can go ahead, process the response and send the response back to the client for the request number one. Now similar to this, you will go ahead and handle more number of requests whenever it is coming. But the point is, the server will not wait for any of the tasks to be completed before it pick another request. So none of the request has to be completed before the server starts processing the next request. So this is a good example for asynchronous programming. This is how asynchronous programming actually works in real time. Now let's say how the multi-threaded programming actually works in case of handling the request from the client. In case of multi-threaded programming, whenever a request comes from the client, the server will actually create a new thread to handle the request. So it creates thread 1 to handle the request 1. And then the thread will actually raise the query to the DB. And this particular thread will wait for the query to be executed and it will wait for the results to be coming from, back from the database. And then it will process the response and send it back to the client. So the whole activities will be handled by the thread number 1. But what happens if another request comes at the same time? So that's where the server will create another thread to handle the request too. So in this case, again, it will query the database and it will process the response and send it back to the client. So the more number of orders coming into the server at the same point of time, the server will create multiple threads to handle those orders. So that, uh, so that uh, the orders, the request from the client will be handled individually. So the request doesn't have to wait uh, until the previous request gets completed. So it creates, it goes ahead and spawns more number of threads as more number of requests comes in. But again, the problem is you cannot simply go ahead and increase the number of threads as and when, when the number of requests gets increased. Because if you do so, uh, the number of threads will go ahead and exhaust your compute resources and eventually your server will crash. So to avoid that, usually uh, the application server usually creates uh, pool of threads, which we call it as thread pool. So there will be some amount of threads, some number of threads already created and available in the thread pool. So whenever a new request comes from the client, you take one thread from the thread pool and then you use that thread to process the request. Once the request has been processed, you again put the thread back into the thread pool. So by doing so, you actually maintain some finite number of threads in your thread pool and you also efficiently utilize those threads to manage the number of requests. So by doing so, you don't exhaust your compute resources. So this is how the multi-threaded programming actually works. And if you closely monitor this example, if you closely observe what happens in, uh, in this example for both multi-threading and asynchronous programming, you might have observed in a nutshell, multi-threading is all about managing the workers. And asynchronous programming is all about managing the task.
multi threaded programming is all about how you create a worker threads and how do you delegate the task to the worker threads and once the job is done how do you terminate those threads right it is all about managing the workers but in case of asynchronous programming it is all about managing the task it doesn't matter whether it is a single threaded or whether it is a multi threaded but it is all about how do you efficiently manage the task basically you don't wait for one task to complete before you go ahead and pick the next task so it is all about how you manage the task so this is one of the major difference between multi threading and asynchronous programming so in this video we talked about what is multi threading and what is asynchronous programming and uh, what is the difference between these two so i hope this video uh, might be useful to you you might have understand the difference between these two concepts uh, i hope you enjoy the video thank you so much for watching audio jungle